Hey there guys, how's it going? I'm just in the middle of swapping over quite a lot of gear and I've came to the point where I need to put my EAF onto this telescope right here, the ZWO FF80 Apple. And I thought, why not just record that process and talk you through it really quickly, just in the event that it helps anybody out there who might be thinking about installing one of these, but is maybe a little bit put off by uh, the potential complexity. There is nothing to worry about, it is very easy as I'm gonna show you. And let's try and go through it from start to finish. So first things first, obviously you're gonna want your telescope somewhere quite secure. And the next thing that I would do is get everything ready that you need. So your EAF is gonna come with multi, uh, multiple adapters. In this case, I happen to know that I need the five millimeter shaft uh, diameter adapter. So I've got that one out ready. I've got four of the included small bolts with included washers. I've got the adapter plate right here as well, ready to go. And of course the EAF. And in terms of Allen keys that you're gonna need, well, you're gonna need a two mil and a three mil, and that's basically everything for this install. Now, one of the first things you wanna do is just offer up this plate to your focuser and roughly see where the screws are gonna go through. Uh, so it goes this way up, the kind of cheese plate right there. And you can see that on this particular focuser, because you want these screws as far apart as possible, so they'll have the highest resistance to torque forces, uh, which obviously it's gonna to need to apply to rotate that focuser. You're gonna want them as far apart as possible, which in this case is gonna be these two bolt holes right here. Now it is worth a little look through, just visually, and I can see the focuser shaft a long way down inside of there. So what I am gonna do is just run one of these bolts in, just making sure that the thread fits to begin with. And you know, if I hit something early, then I'd know that it's potentially not the right ball to put this in. But in my case, there's nothing at all there getting touched. And some of that depth is gonna be consumed anyway by the adapter plate, as you can see. Not really much will actually protrude through if I just uh, show this to my opposite camera. So there's no real worry, but it is a good idea to just dry fit for a moment. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do, if you don't already know the focal point of your telescope, um, is rack it out to about half of your focus's movement. That would be my advice for this. So in this case, it moves 10 whole centimeters. You can see right there. I'm gonna put it to about five centimeters or so. And that's gonna give me a lot of leeway in either direction when it comes to actually getting this thing focused for the first time. Another trick you can do um, if you don't already know the focal point, let's say it's a brand new telescope and you're gonna use it for the first time. Look at other people's pictures of them in use online. And as long as their image and train is, you know, roughly similar to yours, then you can go from roughly where they've got their focus is set as well. So in my case, about 50 mil, 55 mil or so, it's gonna be absolutely fine. Now then, in this case, I'm gonna be installing it on the coarse focus knob side. So you can see you've got two coarse focus knobs right there and one fine focus. These EFs generally need to be attached to a coarse focus knob. So I'm gonna put the open into the top insert the two mil allen key and just back that off a full turn that should be plenty and that should just slide straight off now let's offer up once again this plate just make sure it looks like nothing's going to foul it looks absolutely fine so i'm just going to very loosely put the plate in in place right now nothing's going to be locked down i need this to be able to move to actually fit the focuser in a second but it's just in place to give us an idea. So let's just turn that in. There we go, so that's roughly attached. I'll just slide it back out of the way. And now we need the adapter. Now these adapters have screws spaced, small grub screws basically spaced 120 degrees apart. So you can see there's a pair, there's a pair. On one end, of course, these are gonna be attached to your EAF. That's the smaller end in my case. The other end is gonna to attach to the shaft itself. Now that's gonna be the larger end in this case, because it's a five mil shaft diameter. What you will wanna do is perhaps have a look through this thing. In my case, you can see that it's wound all the way down. Obviously we can't attach it to the shaft like that. So a good tip, you're really gonna to need to do this, is just wind them out until the backs of the grubs themselves are just visible on the outside of the body of the adapter. So when ready to install, it should look something 
if my camera will focus like this with those grubs just proud of the surface and a completely clear barrel to run through so as i say the large side on now what you don't want to do at this point is push this right the way up so that it's in contact with the focuser as it is a moving part and it will wear away at your focuser in this case it'd also be pressing up against the side of a bearing race i don't know if you can potentially see that on there but right in the side there is one so what you do want to do is just have a very small gap between the face of your adapter and the face of your focuser so not touching that's that's key and i'm also lining up one of these grubs with the flat right there which should naturally be at the top because that's where i uh, removed it from so i'm just going to loosely put this in place now only one screw to begin with if you do have longer allen keys feel free to use them <laughs> mine are a little bit fiddly ensuring that we have a small gap between the body if i just try and turn this for the camera body of the focuser and the actual adapter itself right there there should be a small gap and there is that's ready to go so this is just on very loosely at this point in time i'm still going through the process of almost dry fitting now you can see the eaf is not able to be moved by hand so you're gonna to have to move your focuser to accommodate the eaf rather than the other way around so i'm just going to rotate slightly until it looks like the eaf is going to be able to be attached reasonably easily so right there is going to do it i've aligned it up with a flat and now with a little shove it should attach And there we go we've bit it down now onto it don't let go of this at this point because it's just hanging on quite a thin piece of aluminium i'm going to bring it back to the top and slide our plate out as much as i can so we can see we can't quite make it here so i have to slide further and now use the central hole instead those are the two that are the farthest apart in my case and now that if we just pinch it into place will work so i'm gonna go ahead and just let gravity assist me rather than work against me for a moment now while i place in a couple of these next screws into the face of the eaf right there so just passing those through whoops quite fiddly if you've got reasonably big hands <laughs> and go ahead and just get that started by hand nothing needs to be tight at this point in time So there we go everything's now still very much you know able to be moved around and that's absolutely fine because one of the last things i want to do now is kind of turn it to where i can see across this plate just get this so that it is held flat against the body of the focuser if you can hopefully see that there is now no wobble up and down but it could still be moved slightly in and out for uh, making sure this is true and flush and I'm going to want to just make sure that the EAF body is lined up as flat as possible with this. It's just a case of it looking neat, really. It won't affect operation much, if at all. And then I'm going to go ahead and nip these two. These are the first ones to be nipped in my case. Now, you should have access to all of your screws still. If you didn't, then you may need to go ahead and nip those down. Uh, first and then rotate your focuser back to a uh, installable position so i'm going to go ahead nip down the one that we left just touching on the focuser flat the one now attached to the eaf flat and the 120 degrees away from the eaf flat so they're all now down nice and tight and the last pair to get just pushed into place because we still have some slack on this adapter i don't know if you can see that apologies there for the minor break in uh, recording we had an overheating camera anyway so i was just saying uh the the plate is attached to the eaf tightly the eaf is attached to its adapter tightly 
and the adapter is attached to the focuser shaft tightly. The only thing left to tighten now are these two screws right here, holding the plate to the body of the focuser. So we can go ahead, make one final check and make sure everything's square and not needlessly stressed, which it is, it's all gone on very nicely actually. This installation has been extremely easy. So go ahead now, give these one final tighten. And that is it. Literally your EAF is installed in just minutes with very little preparation. All you need to go ahead and do now is just hook it up to a USB, hook it up to however you're going to control the thing and have fun automating your focusing. I hope this has been useful and I'll see you in a future video. Clear skies.